continue what we had started. Uh, if you remember the last one we looked at it, we loaded our title block into our project. We renumbered it based upon, let's say, a, a numbering sequence that you may use in the office. And we also gave it a name. Okay. So as you can see here, the information now is working just like any other title block you may bring into a project. You have under your sheets, you have your, your sheet number, your sheet name, and you can go on from there. Okay. So the other thing we're going to look at now, we're going to go back into this family. We're going to kind of continue it a little bit because there is one other thing that you need to be able to add to your title block um, that is is needed, you know, based upon each project, and that would be a revision schedule. Okay. And basically, when you look at a title block, you know, um, we're not going to go into every part and piece and you know uh, all the different labels because basically those are all custom, if you will, per office or per company. Okay. So as you can see, by using your lines. Um, which you can find here under the Home tab by using the labels, which you can also find under the Home tab. You can basically create your title block with any information that you want. Okay, as you can see here, like all your labels, you can rotate them. So if you want some labels to sit horizontally and some to sit vertically, you can simply rotate those uh, in that in that area or in that orientation. Okay. So, the, but the next thing we want to look at is we want to look at actually adding a uh, uh, revision cloud to our title block. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our um, view tab, and we're going to have here where it says a revision schedule. All right, we're going to click on this, and as you can see here, it looks like a lot of the other schedules you've created, whether it was a door schedule, window schedule, room schedule, or whatnot. Okay, but they've already populated a few fields that will be scheduled in your revision cloud. One of them is a sequence, a revision number, a description, a date. All right. And so basically, as you can see, we can look at the sorting, which they sorted it by a revision sequence, and we can look at the formatting. So if you want to change any of these, you can. You'll notice here that the sequence is listed as a hidden field. Okay. So what it is, is that Revisions have sequences as far as, you know, revision one deals with this, revision two is that, and so on. Well, the number is what's going to populate in that actual uh, schedule, all right, as well as a description and a date. The sequence, because that's how they're sorted, has been a, as hidden, and you will see when we look at it and see how they set it up. Uh, the other thing you can look at is we have here under appearance you can show titles and headers and whatnot and the one thing we're going to look at we're going to come back and readdress this and this is this height you can see by default it's set as variable so we're going to go ahead and say okay we'll go ahead and leave it like that and this is what you end up getting and we will go ahead and bring in that schedule into our title block all right so as you can see here they've already named it as revision schedule okay we have here a revision number, description, and a date. All right. But the thing is, is in this case, you won't get any information here until you start to create some revisions. So what will happen is, if you place this, let's say, at this location, all right, it won't fill in until you start to add revisions to your sheet or to your project. So the rest of this area will remain blank. What you can do, though, is if you edit the schedule, all right, and we go into... Um, into the appearance, we have this variable where we can change it to user defined. So what this means is, is by variable it means that it's only going to populate the information once or populate grid lines once an actual revision is entered. Or we can put on user defined. What the user defined does is you can see it automatically populates grids. Now we can take this dot and we can drag it down and we can cre increase or decrease the number of predefined grids. All right. So now you can add that to your, your title block. We load it back into our project. We'll go ahead and say yes. We're going to override it. And now we have a title block that has a revision schedule on it. So going forward, the rest of them um, is basically a matter of how you want it laid out. If you do have any images, company logos, you can go here to image. And you can import that image of your company logo and place it where you want.